Hello there and welcome to the Ask Time Film Podcast, where we talk film, TV, games and all that jazz like there's no tomorrow. This week, we are talking about the most anticipated films of 2022. My name is Tom and as always, I'm joined by my co-host, John. Hey, it's me. Yes, hopefully I sound okay today, so because there's been difficulties with the Wi-Fi. But anyway, I'm here. Yay! Hey, you, you, yeah. you, sa- you sound fine, don't worry about it. We've got a good, good. quite the year ahead of us. Yes. And obviously, as we did this time last year, we're going to be talking about everything coming out films I, I thought we'd maybe add tv but we'll just stick with films otherwise this will be a long list so i've got yeah. i've got a list of 22 films ah oh, cool and i was we're just going to go through the year and just talk about what's coming out and there are a couple particularly that i want to talk about namely oh. the flash i want oh, to talk about the flash, flash. ah yeah yeah, but well, that's that's number 18 on the list, so we still got quite a few to get. Okay, let's start it. On the 11th of February, we're getting Ooh. Uncharted. Now, I now. have literally just started going through the old Uncharted games. I'm halfway through Uncharted 2. And oh, sick. I mean, can you recreate that on, on the big screen? Like, what do you think? It's very hard to, you know, recreate soon on screen because... Video games are like creative than films. If you if you think about it, like with certain aspects, like Breath of the Wild, you know they did like massive open world sequences as well. In Uncharted, it's just mad. But if they can do it on screen, I, I props to them if they can do it. Yeah. But the the latest Uncharted trailer, the latest Uncharted trailer, that looks good. Uh, I don't think I've seen it. Is that the one we discussed, or is is there a new one? Uh, yeah, but there's a new one. So oh, okay, cool. I don't think I've seen it. I did see one at the cinema recently, and you know, it yeah. looks it looks fine. I think you know, Uncharted is a lot of climbing walls. And... Climbing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of climbing, and it's a lot of like action, and a lot of like you know, ducking behind cover and shooting bad guys. And it's like, yeah. how much of that can you put into a film before it becomes just mindless and soulless, you know? Especially since they're telling an origin story for Nathan Drake and Sully. Why? I don't, I, I'm, you know, I'm not sure that doing this with Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg is the right decision. Yeah, with these actors, I just don't think that it's the right choice. How are they going to, like, embody uh, one of the most well-beloved characters, like Nathan Drake and Sully? And it's going to be so hard to do. I mean, we had the video game curse. Which, which film did break the video game game curse? Has it been broken? I mean, Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog was all right. It was, it was fine. Tomb Raider, a couple of years ago, that was fine as well. Yeah, there's problems with those, like, with fighting games. I haven't played the story of Mortal Kombat or anything like that. But I, I just know about, like, the fighting techniques and everything. Like, uh, butter, butter, mash, mash, and, blah, and everything like that. But with the story, it's very hard because it's all fighting-based. Yeah, it could. I mean, let, let's be honest. You know, Uncharted and, and Tomb Raider and stuff like that, it, it's kind of one step up from Indiana Jones. And Indiana Jones, you know, most of those films are really, really solid. And if you bring the Uncharted characters into that kind of realm, if you balance it enough with exp- uh, exploration and combat and all that, it could genuinely craft a really solid thing. Yeah, I hope they get, you know, the influences of Indiana Jones into into this film because this was, like, hugely influenced by Indiana Jones and uh, other yeah great adventures as well so yeah so our next our next big release uh, of the year is the batman fourth of march now i mean i think this is safe it's safe to say this is my most anticipated of the year oh same 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 i mean what what are we on like we're on three trailers now and every single one like there's no been no trailer that makes me say oh i'm not sure every single one is like yep I'm down. Yep. This looks yep. amazing. Every piece of marketing, every image released, every statement from the actors or the director, I'm just there just like, this is gearing up to be, you know, an incredible Batman film, an incredible comic book film, just an incredible film in general. Yeah, it just looks incredible, like with the cinematography and it just feels more Batman. More Batman. Yes, that's more Batman with the, with the suits and <laughs> cinematography. No, uh, Matt Reeves, right? Matt, Matt Reeves. Reeves. I don't know why my brain was like saying, no, it's Keanu Reeves. No, no, no. It's Michael Reeves. No, no, no. It's Matt Reeves. <laughs> like, it's Bat Reeves, Reeves that, yeah. John. We, we've been Bat through Reeves. this. It's Bat Reeves. Yeah, it's Bat Reeves. Uh, but yeah, Matt Reeves, I can tell that uh, he has put a lot of um, heart and soul into this as well. And there was the Empire, I think, interview. No, it was an interview, but like more about the Batman. 
and yeah. that was so cool. I can tell that this is gonna, just going to be incredible watching it on the big screen. We're going to see something that is going to truly ter- terrify us. Like this Batman, like is going to be a bit unhinged and also like brooding. You know, like that have that dark atmosphere around it. And you know, yeah, with the villains. I mean, look at Penguin. You couldn't even tell that was Colin Farrell. Yeah, you couldn't tell that was him. If you showed that to me, I was like, mm, yes, that's that's definitely Penguin. But I might have to read Year One. Batman again. Mm, well, well, that's that's what it's based off, right? Yeah, yeah. I love every single Batman uh, iteration cinematically. Basically, the Batman. It seems to be this new thing. You know, it seems to bring aspects of the characters. As you're saying, you know, it seems to be crafting an unhinged version of the character and doing things that I think it is time to do. You know, I think that if you want to make a new Batman franchise. Let's make it different and, yeah, you know, let's, it seems that they've really, you know, given Matt Reeves the chance to just go with it and do what he wants. And, you know, I think it looks amazing. It's a different time for Batman as well. It's kind of like, as you said, it's year one, year two, Batman. He's already kind of established, but early in his career, it's doing what Batman Begins did, but it doesn't feel derivative of that. If this film isn't good, I will, I will be crushed inside because i am so excited on so many different levels and i really hope Uh, it makes it into my top 10 of the year like i really like superhero films they don't really do it but this feels special this feels like something more you know the amount of work and effort and talent everything just builds up and yeah please yeah i'm I'm just hoping that it's gonna be so cool and uh, it's going to be like a masterpiece. Like, it's going to be one of the best films in general. Like, we just don't want to see, like, you know what Marvel does? It's like more a bit safe or some stuff. But, like, seeing this, yeah. like, a proper Batman controlled by a, a different director who knows the characters are fully in control of, like, who Batman really is. So, yeah. It doesn't feel afraid of being edgy. It doesn't af- feel afraid of being dark and criticizing the hero. Already in the trailers, we're seeing that Batman is not necessarily the perfect hero. And sometimes it feels like comic book films can be safe with that. It won't really go to this place where it's saying, oh yeah, well, the protagonist we're following is really somebody who's almost irredeemable. And I think that's what makes Batman so interesting as a character is that he is irredeemable in a lot of ways. And he is going so far to things that he is justifying because he's a little bit crazy. And I really hope we explore that in a lot of different ways. Yeah, I'm just hoping that watching down the cinema, then afterwards, I'd just be like crying on the floor, just like, why wasn't it so good? But if it turned out to be great, just won't say a word at all. That was like me when I watched 1917. Like, I just left out the cinema speechless. A film that makes a mark is what I want. I think Batman has been blessed with having so many incredible iterations and I haven't disliked a Batman movie in my lifetime. Any of the ones that have come out since I've been born, I've loved the hell out of all of them. And I don't want that to stop. Uh, our next film is Turning Red. This is Pixar's next film on the 11th of March. Oh. Just been, yeah, you know the one that you're terrified of? Uh, I, I remember like when he showed me the picture, I couldn't stop laughing. Like <laughs> I was just generally just hysterical. That was our Luca review. That was, that feels like so long ago. Um. Yeah, this really recently this has been announced. This isn't coming to cinemas anymore. It's now oh. only Dis- it's only Disney Plus. Uh, so- yes, <laughs> we won't go see the thing, the weird thing on the screen. Yes. Well, so- okay. Hear me out. Have you seen the trailer? No. Right. Okay. So it actually looks really interesting. What? what? Surprise. <laughs> How? I, mean, I, ge- How can I guess it be interesting. <laughs> this is it's about a, a, a young girl who when she hits puberty, when she feels any kind of like strong emotion, turns into a big red panda. And I just kind oh of feel god. Oh god. <laughs> I'm 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 having flashbacks reading the plot of Annette, like a comedian and an opera singing. Uh, give birth to a doll. But, I'm pretty uh, sure that compared to Annette, Turning Red will no, be no, 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 no. child's no, play. No, 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 no. I mean, the plot, it just kind of gave me the flashback of like, you know, there you when go. you're reading the plot. There's an image for you. <laughs> There's <laughs> the image of Turning Red. Honestly, like, the idea that this could have some really interesting analogies for puberty for young kids is cool. And it's Pixar. Okay. Pixar okay. rarely, rarely fail with their films. And, you know, Soul was really solid. We weren't the biggest fans of Luca, but there were some really, a lot of people did really like Luca. 
yeah, I feel like, you know, if, if this really has the talent behind it, then it could be great. I'm not saying it'll be one of Pixar's best. I'm not expecting another Wally or another Incredibles, but I think it could be really cool. Okay. Um, I'm just scared of the way Panda Man. I'm just, I'm just like it's staring down to my soul. Well, it's happening. Like... We're watching it. It's going to be, we're going to have an episode on <laughs> no! it. <It's>... No. <laughs> it is, it, it must happen. It's scaring me, the red panda. I'm not. I'm not kidding. It's just like it's <laughs> staring okay, into give, your soul. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not gonna look. Don't worry. The next one has absolutely nothing scary in it at all. It's Morbius. First yeah! of April. Now, M- Morbius was supposed to come out in January, but then they moved it to April because of like Omicron April fears Fools. or whatever. Uh... Oh, I mean, just like what is. The only thing that I am at all interested in about Morbius is where is it set? Is it set in the Garfield universe? Is it set in the Venom universe? Is it set in the MCU, the Raimiverse? It seems kind of to be set in all of them. I don't really know how that works, but it just looks so inconceivably nothing. You've got Jared Leto again. Why is who lets this man keep on making movies? He, like, he was he, he was Paolo in House he of was. Gucci. Oh my he god! Was. <laughs> did you watch House did, of Gucci? I watched it. I watched it. Did you? It. Brilliant. Yeah. I didn't. How was how was he? <laughs> oh my god! Cheryl, <laughs> that's him. House of Gucci. Um, I I can give you one description. He just spoke like Mario. I'm, yeah, I'm not that's even kidding. What, <laughs> that's what I. He heard, was like yeah. speaking like proper. Like Mario, like some stereotypical Italian accent, like oh mamma mia, mamma mia, and oh no. Have you heard? You had the most weirdest laugh ever. You went. What? I don't even. I don't even know what just happened. That was it. That was his laugh. It sounds like, like you're. <laughs> sounds like you're gagging down the screen. Okay, yeah, that's what it sounds like. Did you hear what he said about like his? He was like, "I engrossed myself in Italian culture. If you cut my skin, it would have been Parmesan cheese. My blood was tomato sauce." Like, what are you on about? What are you what? actually what? talking about? Are you kidding you're me? You're insane. <laughs> I just couldn't take this film serious. Lady Gaga, she can act like properly. I mean, with the accent, it's it's okay. Like, what should she do with that? Adam Driver as this character, he was great. Al Pacino, fantastic. Jeremy Irons, yeah, hell yeah. Then the uh, Jared Leto. What's this a comedy? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> What's Jared this film a comedy? I maybe swear. Jared Leto's presence deserves to be exclusively in comedies. I thought he was the clown, but no, he's the entire circus of the film. Oh, nice. <laughs> He keeps on going this whole method route, and it's like, stop. God, I hate method and now acting. Yeah, it, it, it's just like now we've got Morbius, and I do. I'm 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 gonna see it. We're gonna be talking about all of these on the podcast mostly. Wait. Um, yeah, we <laughs> what, are. What? Don't. Yeah, we, we're doing it. But like, I'm just so perplexed. I'm just like, why? Why? Why is this why a film at all? Who Who thinks? Oh, you know what people really want from their comic book movies? They really want Morbius with Jared Leto. I don't mind the concept of Morbius, but with Jared Leto, it's just like, and we're just we're just about to do Blade. Why don't you just wait, do Blade, and then maybe in a bl- I know it's I know that Marvel don't own the rights to Morbius, so they can't do Blade and then Blade and Morbius or whatever. But it's just like it just <sighs> feels like a, a regular. It just feels like a generic horror movie that's gonna set up like sequels and i just and then uh, and then michael keaton as vulture i guess yeah, what, film. what's he doing here is it the mcu now <laughs> like what what is going I on i don't know is he, is he gonna be this random character just walking around like hey you're morbius like yeah I, I, i'm morbius and like well shoot and then just flies away well and then, well great yeah. like dude uh i don't know listen let's just Let's just move on. Can we'll I just get say to something? Obvious... <laughs> yeah, right, go on. Can I just say something? What if Jared Leto's... What did he prepare for this film? I bet he did not read any single Morbius, like, comic book. He just went to, like, a zoo, and then... He hung out with bats saw... for a week. Yeah, and saw the bats. <laughs> and then Jared Leto was, like, saying, like, like mm, yes. I can't see anything, but I can hear the bats. Yes. The bats must be, like, <laughs> you know the... so... He went. He went so method that he travelled to Transylvania, got bitten by a real life vampire, and the crew had to walk around with crucifixes and garlic so that, so that they, he wouldn't just attack them. He went to the castle and he was so disappointed. 
that he had to do this whole vampire ritual like in the castle and he had to do it for himself like no one could help him so that was the sad part and that's why it became Morbius because no one helped him to do it <laughs> oh man they they literally filmed it in Manchester which is near where we live and I remember they had like a ca- they had like a call out for extras like who literally would have to like and 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 my mum knew somebody who did that and got to meet Jared Leto I could have met Jared Leto and just have that and have just have a picture with him on my wall with some candles my little Jared Leto shrine. I just don't know why he's. Imagine, imagine, so I, I walk into Jared Leto and they're like, "Hey man, what 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 film are you gonna do?" And he said, "Oh, um, I'm I'm doing a film with Ridley Scott." And like, well, well, "Oh, okay, uh, with Ridley Scott, that director who did uh, Gladiator." Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's gonna be whole House of Gucci. <laughs> And they're like, I'm going to play this character, you know, he's going to be like this really weird character, but yeah. Um, yeah. And then after meeting Jared Leto, and like many years later, you see him in House of Gucci. And then he plays Barlow. I, I just, I, let's move on. I don't want to, I don't want to face Morbius again until the film actually comes out. Please, please, let's not do that. Next on the list is Fantastic Beast: The Secrets of Dumbledore, 8th of April. Oh, God, I mean, it's not a good month. I'm, I, I'm not excited for this. I have to say this out loud. I'm not excited for this. Me neither, man. Uh, and and he, here's uh, the thing. Yeah. I love Harry Potter. I, I really <laughs> like... Do you? <laughs> what? I really like the first two Fantastic Beast films. But over time, it's been four years since the last one. And I've just stopped caring because... Wait, four been, years? Wow. Yeah, it came out in 2018. It's just been so long that my mind is just kind of going, I don't care anymore. The trailer came out. It doesn't really make me think anything other than, oh, I hope that Mads Mikkelsen is good as Grindelwald. Like, to me, it just doesn't really do anything that makes me think, oh, yeah, we're warranting the existence of three more of these. Bad idea. Bad idea. I just really want to know who decided to do uh, Fantastic Beasts film. And I thought, yeah, I could like make a film about like, like three be- three beasts and there's one that can like can't be controlled or anything. And then that could be really well work in in your universe. And we can have Johnny Depp. Yes, Johnny Depp. And then two movies later he's not gonna be in it. And he was like the best part of the film series, but <sighs> Listen, I can tell you exactly who thought that, and her name is J.K. Rowling. Not only is her presence in this also extremely problematic and does take enjoyment out of this for me, we don't have to go into that, but at the same time, this was originally going to be a film, like, documentary about Beasts in the Harry Potter franchise, and then she rocked up and was like, oh, no, I have a story, and we can make five parts. And... Seriously, the first one is still the five. Yes, this isn't the end, John. This isn't. There's two more after this. You're kidding me. You're kidding me. No, no, no. we have to stop. <laughs> yeah. We have to stop. We don't want any more. We're never gonna we stop. We stopped that too. We stopped we're that too. We're forever. We're gonna make. We're gonna make a cursed child film. No, we're gonna make. We're gonna make ten cursed child films. We're gonna show all of Albus <laughs> Severus. Don't remind me that book, bro. Don't remind me. Ugh. Dude, honestly, this whole thing is just like. Warner Brothers trying to milk the absolute shit out of out of Harry Potter. I just feel pain already. I just feel pain. <laughs> I still uh... think the first Fantastic Beasts is a good film. Nah, no, I think it's actually a, a really solid film. But after that, we're on the third film now. I just don't yeah, well, care. I... It's happening. We can't change it. I just hope oh, it's yeah. good. I genuinely uh... hope it's good. It could be really solid. I have to uh, quote something from an anime. Whatever happens, happens. So it's true. Yeah. And I, and and either way, guess what, John? What? <laughs> We're gonna be talking about all three Fantastic Beast films in the podcast. John, is, is he dead? I think he's dead. I think John. No! Well, that's it, folks. <laughs> uh, we gotta do I it. Mentally prepare myself, like not to be Why having a breakdown during the <laughs> <laughs> or watching the films, or like not collapse on the floor. But I was thinking that Grindelwald must have like I don't know powers, I guess, in the, in the film, and then all crimes. Yeah, what the, what was the crimes? What were the crimes? What were the crimes? God, he killed a baby. Crime. He killed a baby. Oh. Remember, or oh, one of his what like assistants killed. I don't a baby. remember that. What the hell? Yeah, well, <laughs> well, we're gonna rewatch them. I promise. I promise. Uh, oh, next God. one on the list. Sonic the Hedgehog 2, same day, 8th of April. <laughs> <laughs> you're right, you're right. Nah! <laughs> I promise there are good films in this list. Um, uh, actually, though, the Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 looks really good. 
I'm not okay, gonna lie. Yeah, not gonna you know lie, when? Not gonna lie. Have you seen the trailer? Yeah, I've seen the trailer. You and know when? You know I... when Knuckles comes in and he's yeah. like, "I don't need your oh. power." That's amazing. That it is actually sick. looks really That's cool. Sick. That's sick. But here's the here's the bad part though. I think Knuckles is going to be in the film for five minutes. Well, what makes you say that? Well, I hope it's going to be longer because I, I just Elba's voice acting for Knuckles is just perfect. Yeah, just like, do you think I need your power? And wow, just, what an impression. Yeah, thanks, everyone. <laughs> Woo, Oscar Sorry. 2020, 2022. Let's go. Um, Woo, yeah. We've, we've also got Tails. Tails being played by the original voice actor, which is really cool. Yeah. But also, also Jim Carrey returning as Dr. Robotnik. Here's the thing. Why it's set in, in our world, but I would much prefer a Sonic film set in the Sonic world if it has a name that place. It doesn't seem like we're going to be going to that world. Do you remember like the beginning of Sonic the Hedgehog 1 yeah. where he's like running like like in his like in his world that was amazing that's the kind of stuff that I want to yeah, see that was so sick. I'm not interested in yeah. Sonic and Cyclops go fishing Cyclops Oh yeah you know the actor James Marsden he plays Cyclops in X-Men Oh oh yeah I forgot about that Yeah remember him he he died because Gene killed him or whatever because like he was he wanted to film Superman Returns. Oh, oh, anyway. <laughs> oh. But Jim Carrey, yeah. Excited to see him again. Like, he's he's good at, as Dr. Robotnik, so, yeah. Yeah, I feel like when you hire Jim Carrey, you get a very specific thing. I'm not Jim Carrey's biggest fan, but I think what he does, he does it really well. And what we're getting here is just a mad scientist, and this time he's got a huge mustache. So... Hell yeah. Why the hell not? You know? Uh, yeah. It would yeah, be cool. Yeah. Next on the list, uh, this one may actually be good. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. 6th of May. Yes! Is coming out. Now Sam we get Raimi. the good content. Now we've got <laughs> something to help us get through the depression and get the, like, from the Batman to the the best films. Uh, Doctor Strange. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we, don't, we, don't. <laughs> John, don't hold your breath. You have no idea what's next on the list. Anyway. Oh, um, no. No! Mul- Multiverse of Madness is Sam Raimi coming back. That's all I care about, man. Just let Sam Raimi do what he wants to do. That is literally all I care about. Just looking yeah. at the trailer, the colour grading, the cinematography, uh, it looks amazing. And that's what and I it, care just, about. Uh, I want it to be a good looks- story and I want him to be able to go crazy with it. Yeah. Hopefully that he will do something that will make one division. That was terrible, but hopefully you know he will use that whole thing from one division to make it you know really well with Scarlet Witch in this film. So hopefully he'll tackle some stuff that happened in there, but make it better. You know what I mean? So yeah, so that's the one yeah, thing that I think. Yeah. I think that would be really cool to kind of use that stuff. You know, use the best parts of one division and carry that over. I want to see Scarlet Witch become a villain so bad you yes know, come on like dude. like that's what i wanted so bad in one division and i feel like they should take that to the next level here. we got baited but, uh, we got baited <laughs> above all that above all else i just want them to let sam raimi do what he is good at doing you know like yeah because they didn't last time he made a comic book film it was spider-man 3 and they didn't let him do do what he was best at and that and it wasn't as good and i hope this time <sighs> they do so there we go. It's funny. I don't know who it was, but it was. It, it became full circle if you think about it. like Sam Raimi doing Spider Man Three and then not doing the whole thing, and then it came to Doctor Strange, and then the director couldn't do Doctor Strange Two because of anything, and then we had Spider Man No Way Home, but Raimi didn't direct that. But then with Doctor Strange, with that he's going to do. Uh, he's directing that film, so yeah, it became full circle. You know, with what's happening. So yeah, what? But, <laughs> I, I don't know. Any, no, no, that doesn't I make any sense. I, I, I don't know. Can we, can we cut that out, please? I didn't make any sense. My brain was rambling on about. Dr. No, Strange John. Then. No, John. We're not. We're not cutting that. Out. That's staying in. The no. whole world will see your failure. Oh, okay. Next God. on the list. Are I'm you ready? I'm a failure. I'm a failure. I'm hoping it's going to be great. So that's what I was hoping. Please, ex- ex- excuse my philosophical um debate about, about Doctor Strange. <laughs> but that was yeah. philosophical. Okay. No. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not making sense. Right, carry on. Next on the list, John, get ready no, for DC's no. League of Super Pets. Twentieth <laughs> of May, The Rock, <sighs> Kevin Hart playing Crypto the Super Dog and Ace the Bat Hound in something. 
I have no idea. Like, have you seen the trailer for this? Yes. It looks bad. It looks so, you know, it looks like the it's secret about life. It's is- about power. We stay hungry. We devour. Put it in the work. Put it out. Yeah, sorry. Oh, he's the gone. Gonna be- he's lost his mind, gonna- everybody. Yeah, I'm sorry. We're not but- getting John back. This is it. He's just descended into madness. It, it just, it looks like the secret life of pets. It does. Or something but like worse. that. It just looks like an illumination cash grab. We'll put in some famous actors and we'll just make stuff for the kids. And it works. Financially, those films are super successful. But I hope that they actually put some talent into this. And I kind of think they will, because if you think about DC, they've made a couple, they, they, you know, they make a lot of animated films, especially especially the ones that are released cinematically, like a Batman movie and Teen Titans Go to the Movies. Uh-huh. Both oh, yeah, of yeah. which, both of which are oh. really critically popular. I didn't watch Teen Titans, but apparently it's like really good. So, oh, um, a lot of people hate Teen Titans. I don't know why, but they yeah, just don't. True. We are like not the original TV show, but the new TV show. You know, Teen Titans Go. Yeah, apparently it's fun. Yeah, I don't know. I've never seen it, so I can't really, I can't really say. It's it's definitely not my taste, so I don't watch it. You know. Um, yeah, I'm are... I'm I'm not gonna be watching this film, but. If The Rock says the the rap in this film, I'll give it a 10 out of 10 and I'll watch the film. Oh, no. I don't want him to rap in any film ever. (laughs) Please, no. No, no, but seriously, I'm not excited for this. So why do we, why have we got the best, why have we got the best films, like two best films we've got so far? Is it it two now or is it three? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it's, it's basically two. And the rest no. are just not very encouraging. But don't worry, John. We're definitely doing League of Super Pets on the podcast. No. Yeah. No. Don't worry. No. Don't <laughs> worry. We'll even... Let's go to the cinema and see it together. We'll even do that. Go the extra mile. Oh, God. I have to bring something to the cinema to get me awake while watching. And just like... Drugs. Just like... Some... <laughs> no. <laughs> like bring flour and like Whoa! flour. Oh wow! I mean that's no, a, no, that's a fl- choice. Flour does look like uh, yeah. I know. Much, I know. I know yeah. why flour. I, I, yeah, yes, I'm, I'm being funny. Uh, <laughs> oh, is that what this is? Anyway, next is Top Gun Maverick, 27th of May. This one's been delayed. So I mean, they've all been delayed. Oh, oh but... that, listen, this is the film that needs to be. De- the, 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 no, this is the definition of de- delayed. Top Gun. My break. Well, the first time I heard about this, I was pretty excited because you know it's Tom Cruise and it's Top Gun. But now I'm just I li- I literally remember going to start to go and watch Sonic the Hedgehog. Do you remember we were in your car and we were going to watch Sonic the Hedgehog and we were talking about Top Gun Maverick, which was supposed to come out in like two months time, and we were talking about all the flying that they've done. <sighs> remember that? That's just so sad. That's just so sad. Oh, yeah, man. I mean, I guess the thing is, is like Tom Cruise. He's got such a hand in all the films that he makes. He can clearly make good films. You look at Mission Impossible cinema. Don't worry, we're going to get to Mission Impossible. But he can oh, make good, some good, good Mission Impossible oh, good. films. Oh, good, but good, good, good. good. why, I, I mean, personally, I think the first Top Gun movie's fine. It's good fun. But yeah. I don't really care about making an, another one. Like, really, especially, like, how many years has it been? It's like 40 years or something. Like, yeah. why do we need another one? I just don't know. I don't know. But if you see the comparison with the actress in Top Gun and Tom Cruise, like in the film, but you see them today, Tom Cruise is still the same. I'm not even kidding. Yeah, just like they've, I, I'm pretty sure I might be wrong about this. No, never mind. Because I was gonna say because the 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 original love interest in the first one isn't returning. Instead, it's Jennifer Connelly who's gonna be. But I think it's a different character, so that's okay. I just don't know how he just looks like the same. It's it's because Tom Cruise. They put him in cryostasis and then they take him out for every shooting day. And then it's all Scientology and then they put him back in. It's all Scientology. And then, <laughs> then he comes out to do a, to promote a film and then he'll go back in and then he'll come back out to shoot another one. He'll do a couple of stunts. He'll go back in and every night it, repl- it replenishes him. And right now he, he just, he just, he just pumped full of ice. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Top Gun Maverick. Oh yeah, my dad. He's he's very excited for this one. Apparently, he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, the danger zone. So hey, people who were alive when this film came out, they are. So I've got my. I like this one like friend of my dad's who every time we see them is like, is Top Gun out yet? And it's like, no, it's not out. No, why do you it's care not. so much? Um, but yeah, pe- people like who who watched the first one when it came out really really care 
eh, I don't, I'm not that bothered, but I'll watch it because yeah. films, right? Am I right? Yeah. Oh, mate. Yeah, I mean, oh, mate. I watched the best film this week at the cinema. Oh. Have, have, oh, have you shoot. heard of Belfast? Yeah, the place in Ireland. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, the, the, the film, the film Belfast. No. Dude. Oh, my. Right. Okay. It's not out yet. I got it at a preview screening. I didn't know what it would be. It was a secret screening and I got it. And oh, my God. It might already be the best film of the year. It's incredible. It's a written and directed by. Yeah, no, it's amazing. I went to see three films in a row. I went to see Kingsman. I went to see Matrix, both of which were, they were fine. And then Belfast just absolutely, oh, it's incredible. It's incredible, man. Trust me, it's amazing. I'm pretty sure that it's got like, glowing reviews from everyone but yeah it's amazing um next on the list jurassic world dominion 10th of june oh. i'm oh. screaming inside oh. why are we doing this do we have to see this film i mean yes yes we do the fans okay, okay, demand okay. it we're doing an episode on it this film i'm not really looking forward to because why on earth would you do another jurassic park film like, you gotta, you gotta complete the trilogy, John. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta make what, what trilogy, trilogy and make what, money. What, what, what trilogy, Tom? What trilogy? Which one? <laughs> Jurassic World, Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom, and Jurassic World Dominion. The, the 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 holy trilogy. Don't you understand? It needs to be done. We're gonna bring back the original cast. I don't know why. It doesn't make it. Oh, I just. It's Chris. Ah. Is Chris Pratt gonna be in this film? Yes. Both. Okay. It's it's the cast from the last film, so Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard, and it's Sam Neill, Laura Dern, and Jeff Goldblum. They're all back. Why? Oh, no. I, I don't know. This is going to be. This is going to be like. This is going to be like Afterlife. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> Ghostbusters Afterlife. This is going to be oh, like yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what everyone's doing. You know, same with the Matrix. We're going to talk about Matrix next week. Oh God! This oh is just God! What, this is like, going to be repeat. This is Matrix. We're just. Jurassic we're just, Park and everything. This is like the best films, but repeated over again. Oh my god! We just bring like they're just bringing back old ca- and it's just like Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom was not a good movie. Jurassic World, it's not terrible, but like why? Why did they, like blah, the only Jurassic World, the only Jurassic Park movie worth anything in the grand scheme of things is the first one. Why are the we now one. having... It why is, is there six of them? It's incredible. The first one is amazing. No one's going to dispute that. Anybody who disagrees, no, no. If, if, I if have strong disputes, words for you. Yeah, I, I, and if anyone doesn't say that Goosebumps is a masterpiece, I have strong words for you. Hmm. If anyone has strong words for, about Matrix... We're coming for and, you. Anyway, Matrix is make, great. Matrix is great. Yeah, Ma- don't, Matrix yeah. is good. No one's going to... Yeah, but like, I, it just... just Stop. Make original things, please. I, I, like, I, I, ugh, uh, like I know that this is all like films that are franchises, and you know, that's what we're talking about. And there are hundreds of original films that will be better than most of the f- films in this list. But I just think it's such a waste. There's so many great people working. You know, even in. Did you watch the first ten minutes that was released online? Yes, I did, and it was just two dinosaurs. Yeah, it's just two dinosaurs fighting. For like ten minutes, I don't care. Like I, gotta, I don't care. Like this, the visuals this is not are... like Godzilla. This is King Kong. That that that, that <laughs> came out last year. Oh, oh it was God. bad. It was very bad. Um, but like the visual effects are incredible. Yes, they are. But this isn't like I want a good story, and I really hope that it is actually good this time because the last one was not good, and I don't care. But. We're doing it. We're doing it, John. It's going to happen. I, I, I was so excited for the best films, but now I'm just like looking at the film screen out this year. Okay. And I'm like, okay. So, so. The, the next one has potential. The next one is Lightyear coming out on the 17th of June. That could oh. be really cool. Now, the I, I think the trailer for Lightyear looks awesome. It was it unexpected. Was. But I don't, <laughs> I don't know why, but my first, my, the first thing that came to my mind when watching the trailer was... Ryan Gosling for some reason. Yeah, because of First Man, of course. <laughs> yeah, so of course, First Man. Because like... Ryan Gosling was the first man on the moon, obviously. Whoa! Oh my god! Yeah, yeah no, I, I get that. It has a lot of Apollo Eleven, First Man kind of vibes, you know. Which space... is great for. I mean, uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Space, ex- can, space exploration. It sounds. It sounds really cool, and you know, 
this just looks like, you know, the same kind of aesthetics they were going for with Wally, you know, like space, uh, you know, like that kind of, (laughs) yes, John, that kind of exploration. And I think it, it could be really cool. I don't need this film because Toy Story, they've they've milked it enough. They milked every <laughs> single thing I know. in Toy Story. <laughs> yeah, but they're all great, though. At, at least Toy oh, yeah. Story, every single Toy Story film is an absolute banger. But Lightyear, hey, you know what? I'm ready. Give it to me. Do it. Now, John, give it me now. Now, I'm ready. Give it now. <laughs> you got to give it to me. <laughs> hey, boy, we need, the, we need the help. <laughs> <laughs> say the line, John. you got to say the line. The Buzz Lightyear line. Ah! You know it, John. The Buzz Lightyear line, John, please. You know it. You know this. I'm not going to say it because I'm not going to talk about Lightyear. Uh, no, you know it. My brain actually manually forgot. It's to infinity and beyond, John. Oh, to infinity what? and beyond. Oh, yeah. No, yeah it's yeah. too late now. It's too late. <laughs> it's Next too, film. It's infinity and beyond. Yeah, I said it. I said it. Well, it's not too late. You cannot be what? too late or too early. John, on, See? On, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, John, you have no idea. I can see the list. I can, see, you know, so many of these films make me sad. Next film, Thor: Love and Thunder, eighth of July. Why are we making a fourth? A fourth I don't know. Thor film, but Taika Waititi. Okay, I guess Taika Waititi. He's made incredible films, but I'm not the biggest Ragnarok fan. I don't want more of this. It doesn't have enough emotion oh, to oh. it. Oh, oh, they, they they're doing the same joke again in Solar L- Love and Thunder. If you if you know with um you know that thing with matt damon you know playing the store and everything oh yeah matt damon was loki and sam neill was odin and yeah yeah, i remember that scene yeah they're gonna do that again okay (laughs) sure i mean okay here's here's the big thing for me they're doing the mighty thor they're doing jane foster as thor they better not mess this up. This is one of my favorite comic book l- runs. Have you seen? I've read. Have you seen Natalie Portman on on set? No, but I've seen like promotional like art of what she looks like. She is strong. Like I'm not kidding. She has <laughs> muscles and everything. Uh, right. Let's have a look. Thor for Natalie Portman. I mean, I don't doubt it. Oh my god. Yeah. No, I know the one you mean. She's really buffed up, hasn't she? Yeah. Mental. I mean, okay. I think that Jane Foster as Thor is one of the most interesting and compelling comic book storylines in modern modern Marvel. It's so cool. But here's my problem. They said they're not doing the cancer thing. And I've I've spoken about this many times on the Yeah, I know. They're not they're not doing the cancer thing. That's what makes her character so intriguing. I'm not excited now because we can't see something that's so emotional, emotionally pulling to to the film. And one of the first issues I had of Thor was the Jane Foster story. And the yeah. first issue that I ever opened up was like her telling about her experience with, with, the, with the cancer. And I was so emotionally driven. Like I knew yeah. what she was facing to. And oh my God, no, nah, I'm not excited anymore That's now. No, I'm really, the, the, I'm, nah, I'm mad now. I'm mad now. I'm not going to. The problem is, is that, yeah, I know that it's a really difficult topic, but that's what makes the character so interesting. Every time she picks up the hammer, she has to face the fact that she's getting closer and closer to death. That is what makes it so good. And you take that away, then it's just, you're just doing female Thor. And that is such a disservice because the character is so much more than that. And I hope they do it well. I really, really hope they do it well because it's so near and dear to me. And I know that Taika Waititi didn't do much emotion in Ragnarok, but you watch What We Do in the Shadows, you watch Jojo Rabbit, you watch any of his other films, and the emotions are so strong. That's all I'm asking for. I'm just so sad now. I'm, John, I'm not really happy. I promise the next film is actually a banger Spider Man Lotus. Gonna... Oh, yeah! Spider Man Lotus, yeah! <laughs> yeah, okay, uh... so we, we don't have a date for this yet, but we know it's this year and it's kind of mid year. And for those of you who don't know, it's a fan film about Spider-Man. It's kind of adapting the Spider-Man Blue storyline, I believe. But my God, it looks amazing. It looks absolutely incredible. The passion that has gone into it from all of its creators is amazing. And I really hope it inspires loads of fan films. But just getting to see a Spider-Man story that isn't focused on the multiverse or bringing back old characters, that's just focusing on an emotional story 
about real characters struggling with loss and grief and the weight and expectations on Spider-Man as a hero is something that I've missed for a long time in Spider-Man stories. Getting that simplicity, even Spider-Verse. I love Spider-Verse, but there's something special about getting those really small, intimate stories. And I can't wait. I really can't. Oh, yeah. When you showed me the trailer for Prime Lotus, that was so good. Like, how they did everything in the trailer. Like, when you showed me that picture of, of the suit, that was CGI. Yeah. What the heck? There's, there's so much gone into this. And it's going up on YouTube for free. Anyone can watch it and everyone should be watching it. It sounds amazing. Okay. Yeah. Going to be looking forward to that um, as well. Yeah. You don't see a lot of like Spider-Man projects like um, in the film industry. And, well, I mean, with Marvel and Sony and everything. But but yeah, I'm pretty excited to see that. Exactly. That's, that, that is perfect. We'll definitely be doing an episode on that. Next film on the list is Batgirl uh, so again we don't know we don't have a date for this but we do know it's this year possibly mid-year I think this film could be really cool uh, we're bringing back J.K. Simmons as Commissioner Gordon we're bringing back Michael Keaton as Batman we're bringing in Brendan Fraser as Firefly and we've got Leslie Grace playing Batgirl I think it could be really cool we haven't ever had Batgirl in live action on film and I think that showing the story of of her could be super interesting and do different things than other Batman films have done. I'm not particularly excited for that, but I don't know because the Flash coming out this year, right? Right. Yeah. Well, there is a lot to say about the Flash. Yeah. So let's we'll talk more about Batgirl and the Flash bit. Uh, Let's move on to the next one. Black Adam, 29th of July. This is The Rock doing another DC film. Ah, uh, okay. I, get, I guess a prequel to Shazam or like a kind of spin-off to Shazam kind of thing. I think it looks really cool. Like what we've seen so far, some of the action looks really, really sweet. And there are a lot of interesting characters to explore, especially with the, the JSA, Dr. Fate and Hawkman and all the different characters they're bringing in. That, that is what excites me the most, not exactly Black Adam as a character himself. But yeah, I love seeing DC like expand and explore and do interesting things. I think that could be really cool. Yeah. I mean, like we saw like a few first minutes of Black Adam and I guess that's cool. The Rock has been working on this project for a long time now, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, It's even, even longer than like, even like before that Shazam came out. Yeah. So that's the mad thing. So I wonder what it's going to do with this. So that's going to be really interesting. So yeah, looking forward to, to see what's, that could be like, but it's not stable at DC EU anymore. If if anyone known what why now, but yeah, we'll see what's that going to be like. I guess. Yeah, let's. Yeah. Uh, we got we got more to talk about for that. Uh, but next one, Mission Impossible Seven, thirtieth of September. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Now that this is the Tom Cruise led film that I'm most excited for. Yes, some of the first first Mission Impossible films were great. I mean, the first mm. one, that's good. Uh, yeah. The second one, eh. Third yeah. one, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, good. Fourth yeah. one, holy crap, yeah. that's so good. Yeah. Five, Come on. what the yeah. heck? Yeah. Six, I'm just like your brain couldn't like comprehend what's happening on screen. And like, yeah. that is the cinematic masterpiece. Five, that, that six is so good, Fallout. We're going to be talking about all six Mission Impossible films in the podcast. That's definitely going to happen. Tom Cruise and Christopher McQuarrie, the director of five, six and seven and eight, is a match made in heaven. They're doing great things. What I hope to get out of this, t- so so um, seven and eight are being shot at the same time. And what I get hope to get out of it is a finale to this to the series. You know, this it's not just about Tom Cruise doing stunts. That's a huge part of it. The action is incredible. But what they, they've told some really good stories and they have pushed these characters to really interesting levels. You think about what they have done with the character of Ethan Hunt in three, four, five, six. Yeah. It's taking this James Bond archetype and really making him so much more layered. And I hope that they end the story because Tom Cruise can't do this forever, you know? And I don't really, I'm not interested in the franchise going on with different characters because we've got such a strong franchise here and I really hope that they end it on a high. Yeah, especially this one is going to be part one. That's going to be insane. Like, we don't know what's going to happen to Ethan Hunt in seven or eight i'm gonna make a prediction that in seven the cliffhanger will be that ethan hunt is dead but he's not really well, dead yeah or yeah, somebody dies be- and then like you know it's either that ethan hunt is the one who's dead or the other characters die and ethan is on his own and then in the next film 
either Ethan Hunt is actually alive or like the other characters, you know, some of them are still alive. I don't know, something like that. That's just the first Mission Impossible. It, would, it would be funny. Think. Here's the funny thing. You know, uh, Back to the Future at the end yeah. of part one, you know, like he gets the letter from Dark. But it's like from Eddie 85. <laughs> Yeah, at the end, be like that. he's like, oh my god, it's Ethan, he's alive, he got struck by lightning, and he's he's in the Old West, and then back to, and then Mission Impossible 8 is Ethan Hunt in the Wild West, yes. And then, yes. and then it goes back, to, it goes back in time, where Ethan Hunt was on the train, uh, while getting, uh, yes, that oh my god, to... they could have, they could go back to the original Mission Impossible, oh my god, yes, introduce time travel into mission impossible and we can revisit oh that would that would be insane god i want uh, that now that has to happen somebody uh, make I'm it sorry. happen please I, I, i'm really good at pitching ideas but yeah but that that would be so cool well uh, yeah, would, let, do yeah it, but. they sh- that would be insane but that's that's more of a fast and furious thing than a uh, than a mission impossible thing i must say next cool. on the fast list if you can do time travel in fast and furious Probably one day. I mean, let's be honest. They went to space. What's next? How? Where do you go from there? They're gonna go to the moon. It, yeah, they're going it, to it, the moon. It's they're going that to was, the moon. God, yeah. Fast and Furious Nine was bad. It that was, was just... aw- that was god awful. Like, uh... oh, it was fun though. I mean, hey, it was I had fun. fun with it. It was yeah. fun, like with Tej and uh, with Roman, like everything with that. <laughs> but like, I, I kind of wish Vin Diesel said family a bit more, like family. So. Well, we can get that's why, we, that's why we come to these films for the family. So there we go. Next on the list, Spider Man Across the Spider Verse, Part One, Seventh <gasps> yes! of October. Eating good. We're eating good. We really are. Now oh, yes. we we just got like a little teaser, and already I, I, I'm smelling... I'm not gonna lie, I'm worried. I am worried because the first one's so good, but I'm so excited. I can tell already it's gonna be insane. Imagine the possibilities yeah. right now going to do different dimensions. The first one was very much other universes coming to Miles' universe. This time we're going to get to see Miles explore different universes. You know, obviously you've got Spider-Man 2099 and loads of different things, which I think would be really cool. But I don't want them to just... And obviously this is part one of two. Based on the first Spider-Verse, we could have ourselves an iconic superhero trilogy. However, I really hope it's good because the first one is so incredible that I don't want them to ruin it you know you think about kick-ass which is undoubtedly one of the greatest comic book films and kick-ass 2 is so incredibly inconceivably bad that you know you really can't think about kick-ass in the same way obviously it doesn't change or tarnish the original but it it, you know it kind of sullies the the overall perception of it i don't want that with spider-verse i really want the sequel to absolutely slap that's what that's what i need yeah i i'm a bit worried because the film is the first film is just so good, like with everything that it had. It's not as good as Endgame, is it? Is it, huh? huh? Josh, Josh, that was me being really young, uh, th- consumed by Marvel a lot of the time. Like, young and naive. We first watched Spider Verse. John didn't see it at the cinema. Josh, and, Josh, no. And, and, no, please, <laughs> no, please, I'm, no, I'm telling no, a story. No. I'm telling a story. And, and you were like, Endgame's the greatest comic book film ever made. And I was like, okay, let's watch Spider-Verse. And we ended it and you were like, it's not as good as Endgame. And I was like, what? <laughs> really? Just just bonkers. Just absolute bonkers. You're a, you're a crazy boy. If the, okay. if the Oscars, That's... I don't know, if, if, if the Oscars were like, John, what is this? Why, why, why would you say that Endgame is better than Spider? No, listen, I, I, I love Ma- it. It's, it's better. <laughs> Martin Scorsese comes up and is like, he sits you down and he's like, John, we've got to talk. What is this? What is this? You favoring this 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 theme park ride over over cinema, over the pure power of cinema? What are you talking about? Huh? Shut up, Scorsese! You can't talk about weather coasters. <laughs> you can't say shut up, Scorsese. He'll kill you, John. He'll oh my kill god! You using the no, power of he's cinema. He's gonna kill me with Goodfellas. He's gonna kill me with The Departed. He's gonna kill me with Silence. Oh my god! Kill him with Silence. That's good, wow, that, that's a good line. Anyway, Spider Verse. That's really exciting. Okay, next one that we've got. Probably the one that I'm most excited to think about. The Flash. 4th of November. Now, this is the one where it's like, if the rumours are true, I'm not sure how I feel. 
Okay, so for those of you who don't know, uh, spoilers. This, if you don't want to, know. yeah, I, I, yeah, I yes. guess this is kind of spoilers. So just kind of skip ahead five minutes or so. Yeah, uh, if you're still here, you know the rumors. <sighs> Welcome have... to the depression zone. So it seems like what the Flash is going to do is it's going to erase the Snyderverse. It's going to get rid of Affleck as Batman. It's going to get rid of Cavill as Superman. This could be the end of anyone's hopes for the Snyderverse. Mm. However, before we talk about that, I want to point out this could be a good thing. And what I mean by that is this could separate the Snyderverse, put it in its own universe, so we could so Warner Brothers can make its own DC universe and then have the Snyderverse as well, in a similar way to how we've got the MCU and the Raimi universe and the Amazing Spider-Man universe. They're just Actually, separate. yeah, that works. Yeah, right, they're going to make the multiverse separate. So the main timeline is the one with the Flash and Aquaman and Shazam. And then the other timeline is Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, Justice League, Justice League 2, Justice League 3. That would be cool. However, I don't think that's what they're doing. I would love it if that's what they were doing, but I don't think so. Just erasing all of this, it just shows that they have no interest in having the dark and light tones anymore it seems like all they want is to do an emulation of marvel and erase it so they can do another justice league film that they can properly try and do an avengers film with it looks like they're going to do what x-men did future past is did and just get rid of the stuff they didn't like yeah if they're going to do that like not doing it like another universe but actually erasing everything like thanos like snapping half the universe but now just like taking everything but this time it's half the franchise apparently they're going to get rid of wonder woman 84 as well the big thing that annoys me is that they're going to get rid of batman and superman and replace them with batgirl and supergirl now here's my problem with that batman and batgirl and superman and supergirl they're not the same character you can't just take one out and put the other one in supergirl and batgirl are so different they're not the same characters they're defined by different things they have different backgrounds that's not how it works you can't just pluck one out and put the other one in maybe if they told a story about batman and and superman kind of giving you know their mantles to them it could work and maybe that's what they're going to do with batgirl and keaton's batman but it just feels so disingenuous to just erase things. And Henry Cavill is never going to get his, if this is true, Henry Cavill is never going to get his proper chance to be the Superman he wanted to be. And that's so depressing. And I'm, I'm just going to be like, really sad if they're going to do that in the cinema. It is pretty difficult to deal with, especially for us, you know, as, as fans of the Snyderverse. You know, it is something that we want to at least see be acknowledged as the superior cutters. But here's the thing. Warner Brothers have been neglecting the Snyder Cut ever since it came out. They haven't been recognizing its achievements. And I think that's because they're ashamed of what they did. And, you know, they won't admit that they had that moment of weakness. And by moment, I, of course, mean about four years of just, you know diminishing the work of all of that and it seems that they're continuing by just pretending it didn't exist and trying to move on and I think that's not the way to do it I think you know that should be the canon version and yeah I I just think it's it's not the right way to go it isn't yeah I just feel like this whole situation is just childish like they're just erasing everything and then it's just so mean like what they're doing to Zack Snyder like what he's been he put his work into this like everything he's done and now it might get raised and exactly like he he helped build this universe those films are integral and you can't just ignore that and I think that's what they want to do it's 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 disappointing what they want to do is they want to cash in on that Marvel kind of profit but you don't see Marvel erasing its old films Marvel had some real tankers, even recent recently. Ant Man and the Wasp, Captain Marvel. Further back, he's got Incredible Hulk, Iron Man Two, Thor: The Dark World. But they might ignore them slightly, but they don't. They're not going to about to erase them. And w- what this is going to do, this is going to make people who want the Snyderverse a lot more vocal. And some of those people are really, really childish and are really toxic about it. And I think if there's a way to deal with it, it is not by erasing it all. That's a stupid idea. Yeah, I'm not going to be really happy with the future of DC if they're going to do something that just really made it excited about, you know, Batman v Superman and Man of Steel. Those films were just so exciting. And then we got the Snyder Cut, which was so satisfying because we got like a full director's vision of the film, even though that was over COVID. And then how he really wanted to have it for his fans and everyone to see it. And it was well-deserved. But now they're just, they're just raising everything if they're going to do that. But 
maybe that one rumor doesn't exist and then they might use this whole storyline as you know that's oh a universe where batman and oh, batgirl plays in a batman and then supergirl play, replacing some is superwoman and then that could be like a whole story like what happened here and then they could have like that thing like they did in a flashpoint yeah hopefully i think that would be really cool but what i think if this is true and after no way home I have to kind of believe this because, you know, all the leaks about No Way Home, well, not all of them, but a lot of them were right. But what I hope that they are doing is removing the Snyderverse so they can build it on its own. You know, we exist in a time when DC is making DCEU and the Batman universe and the Joker universe. And I hope that they are taking the Snyder films out and they're saying, okay, we'll do the Snyderverse and we'll do everything else because what do they have to lose because it's not money. They're only going to gain money by doing this. They're just risking everything, like, for s- stupid reasons, so... Definitely. Let's just carry let's, on. Let's, ra- let, let's wrap up as quickly as we can. We've got four left. Let's get through them as, as uh, fa- light, lightning round. Okay, you ready? Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, 11th of November. We still oh, don't know what be... the deal is with this film. It's been delayed yeah. again. You know, Letitia Wright is an anti-vaxxer and so is messing up the yeah, production. Yeah, she's messing up the set and everything, so... Yeah, like, is this going to work at all? How are they going to do it without Black Panther himself, Chadwick Boseman? It's going to be really emotional if, like, there's one scene where a funeral or maybe with mm. Chadwick, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Maybe they're bringing back Killmonger. It feels like there's a, there's a lot that could go wrong here. <laughs> But hey, the first Black Panther is pretty solid. So hopefully, you know, they kind of bring something new to it. Um, Next is Creed 3, 25th of November. I think Creed 2 is the perfect ending to the Creed storyline and the Rocky storyline. I don't really want Creed 3 to happen because I don't want it to kind of become pointless and just going on for no reason. In the way that Rocky felt, you know, in kind of Rocky 3, 4, 5 even though I think those films are great. You know, I don't see why we're keeping on going because I think two was the perfect ending. So yeah, hopefully it's good. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to it, but yeah, for Creed, Creed 3, but yeah, we'll see what's, what's the deal with that anyway. Yeah, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, 16th of December. Um, um, I think... Not excited. No, I'm not excited. I mean, I love the first Aquaman film a lot. And I definitely think this one next one will make money. But I'm not too excited to see Amber Heard back. And with all this stuff about the DCEU, it's difficult to feel enthusiastic. However, I like the director. I like most of the actors. And from what we've seen, it looks like it'll be interesting. So hopefully it will be interesting. Yeah. And the final one, Avatar 2. Why? Avatar 2? Yeah. 16th of December. Uh, No UK release date yet, but Um, James Cameron. When Avatar came out. When did it come out? 2010? I might be wrong. Let me have a look very quickly. 11 years later. Sorry, 2009. 12 no, years later. No, 13. Later. John, it's, 20, it's 2022 now. Oh, God. Oh, God, yes. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> I just don't James Cameron has been making Avatar sequels for years and I just I just don't know anymore I just don't have any interest I I mean I just don't know what's the deal with Avatar it's not even interesting I mean the world is but not even remotely interesting like how they can carry on with something like if you can stand alone with that whole movie like if you just put it as one that's good. That's decent with some of the stuff they had in the film. But what are you doing, man? Just just a, just... just a waste of his talents. You know, I understand that he's interested in all these technical things. But dude, you really could just be doing anything else and pushing yourself. But whatever, I guess. He can do what he wants at the end of the day. He's James Cameron. Wasn't Ridley Scott going to do like more alien films or something? Yeah, he was going to make a third in the Prometheus and Covenant trilogy. But I think Disney scrapped that when they bought 20th Century Fox. But apparently they're letting James Cameron make more Avatar films because of its success. So yay, money, am I right? Money. Uh, so yeah, that, that's it. It's... <laughs> it, it it's. It's definitely a year. There's a lot of stuff coming out this year. Some of it's exciting. Some of it definitely not. Hopefully, they're all good. Doesn't <laughs> seem so, though. Uh, I'm not very no. optimistic, but there we go. Uh, next week, we're going to be talking about Matrix Resurrections. Another ah! uh, another sequel ah. to, a, to a brand from a while back. So, yeah, you tune in then if you want to hear our views. And you can give a like to this video if you enjoyed our slow descent into madness and then depression. 
just yeah and uh you can subscribe if you want to hear more from us we've just done all the spider-man films hawkeye the best films of 2021 and we will be doing as i say matrix and then the kingsman and yeah all these films that we've talked about today we will be covering in some capacity uh, in the future and you can follow us on twitter and instagram at our time film pod or give us an email about your thoughts on any of these tell us if you think that we're actually being too pessimistic or too optimistic about some of them uh, email us at ask at gmail.com yeah i think that's everything get vaccinated wear your mask in the cinema yeah please just be safe yeah tell us what you're excited about if you're excited about that one disney film i'm not gonna name it i'm not gonna name it at all i'm sorry i'm not gonna turning smash. green smash hulk um <laughs> yeah just be safe uh all right take what you're given give nothing back good, good goodbye <laughs> goodbye it's it's not a happy ending is it it's, it's just actually kind of it's kind of depressing is so de- this is so depressing if remember, you got to this far yeah well, remember everyone the batman's coming out this year that's all we need. Please. The Batman and Spider Verse. That is literally like those are going to be good at least, oh. right? They'll yeah. be good. The ba- they better be the good. Batman's going to be like my copium for this year. Like I'm just going to be like using it for the entire year. Just like okay, the Flash, the Batman, the Batman. Okay. <laughs> every like... time, every time there's a bad film, I will rewatch the Batman to cleanse myself. Actually, God, it's good. it better be that's good. True. That's actually no, it's good. Not, you know, like... That's a bad idea. <laughs> You'll watch but, Batman okay, twenty no, times. No. What are you on about? That, that's good though. We'll get to see more of the fight. Ah. Analyze more like yeah. that's not what I want. This I this is oh god. Yeah. Oh, Welcome god. back to the Outside Film Podcast. This week we're talking about Batman <laughs> again. <laughs> yeah, we've got yeah. hey, we've got TV as well. Lord of the Rings TV show. Yeah. Gonna be exciting. Obi-Wan oh, Kenobi. Oh yeah. Some cool stuff. They, they, spent, they spent millions on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did, yeah. Almost a billion dollars. There we go. See you next week, guys. <laughs>